Hi guys, Simon here. Again, new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Today, Kirby Trouble. Oh, this is a good one. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the previous videos, I'll try and remember to put a link in to the Kirby story. So, this young lady works at the FLB bar, not at my bar, but usually after she's been bar fined and she's out and about, when she's finished, she used to come to our bar in Soy 7 because she was Apple's best friend. Now, I remember this one evening, um, it was quite late, it was, it was 11ish, maybe a bit later, and four, let's say northern, UK lads walked in. A um, little bit uh, amorous, a little bit merry, all good fun. Came in, had a drink, and someone in the bar was telling them about Apple, how amazing she is. And Kirby had turned up. And Kirby and Apple and Frozen and Mamba Sam chatting away in the corner at the front of the bar. And these guys, you know, they. they chatting to the other girls and another customer was in there was telling them about Apple and Kirby that was it they were beckoning Apple and Kirby over bought them a drink the girls went over Mama Sam went over as well they bought her a drink and I couldn't hear what was being said but they were uh, into something um, anyway a few minutes later uh, Kirby disappears off on the phone, stood across the road by the wall, and uh, I could see her on the phone. And Apple came away. She had that sort of look of disgust on her face. She wasn't into these guys at all. Um, and she was frozen, but still talking to the guys. So, 20 minutes, a few minutes later, Kirby came back in, back to the guys. 20 minutes, 25 minutes later, two girls turned up freelancers well again they could have been FLB girls I don't know but two of Kirby's friends turned up and then Kirby grabbed a girl from my bar one of my girls who was known to be a little mischievous let's say um, not the best looking girl but she was uh, beginning to get a reputation so suddenly there was three girls that weren't from our bar with these guys and one of our girls frozen in there negotiating and frozen off to the cashier raises some invoices comes across with a bin the guys pay the bin and Kirby her two friends that she telephoned and the one girl from our bar with the four guys gone I'm there. What? What's going on? Come on, frozen. Wait. What's happening? Come on, tell me. Nose is hell. So these four guys had come in. They talked to Apple and Kirby, and they wanted. And quite a lot of guys used to come in the bar. And I'd heard other stories, other bar owners and managers, that they'd wanted. Maybe it was two guys or four or however many wanted girls to go back for aerobics but they wanted the girls to swap about as in well you know they want to the guys wanted to try all the girls and vice versa and this is what the four guys had requested uh, Apple wasn't interested not in the slightest it's not her cup of tea and I said to her when Frozen explained what these guys wanted um, Kirby had got two of her friends and Frozen had got one of our girls and put the four together. Bar fine. So the three girls who didn't work for us suddenly became freelance employees. Charged the guys 300 baht each girl, 1200 baht, bar fine. Then it was up to the guys and the girls to sort out figures and money. And Kirby had already done a deal with them for the, all four of them. I don't know. So. Apple's there next, and I said to Apple, why didn't you? And she's like, they're too much work if you're more than one customer 
too much work for the money. Uh, I'm not into that. Uh, and she was like, mm. and Kirby is. Mm. <laughs> Kirby's definitely, was definitely into all that. She was becoming renowned for, as I mentioned before, the um, oral extraction expert that she was. But she really, when she'd had a few drinks, I'd seen her in action in the FLB bar doing things where she should have had a room. So she was really into that. They all went off. So I thought nothing more of it. Okay, the bar, we just got 1,200 baht. Apple wasn't amused, but later on Apple had got a customer anyway, so she was happy. And uh, night went, finished the night. I thought nothing more of it. Um, and the guys had took the four girls back to their hotel and they were staying at a hotel, it's been mentioned a few times in the comments on this channel already, uh, Penthouse Hotel I think it was called. Now I've never been, I don't think, to the Penthouse. I've heard r rumours that it um, maybe had specialty rooms or there was something special about that hotel, I can't remember. You guys, comments below, Penthouse Hotel, what's it all about? In Patea. So they were staying at the Penthouse and they took the girls, so that was it. Next morning, I get up, um, I'm in the bar, I open the shutters right up. There's no one in the bar, just me. So, get make myself a coffee. I'm sat down on one of our tables, further back in the bar, that's um, the rectangular table with the benches. So I'm sat back a bit. Just woke up, just got up. No staff, no girls, nothing. Minding my own business, drinking a coffee and smoking. This must have been about 11 in the morning. Um, in walked three of the four guys from the night before. Very agitated, angry, aggressive, straight into the bar. I'm the only one in there. They know I'm the manager. Straight in my face. All start shouting off. Aggressive, really aggressive. And I'm just minding my own business, having a coffee, and I'm like, what the hell? And they're really starting to to become more aggressive. Now in that situation, if you're a bar manager, you don't need hassle and stuff like that. So all you do, you ring the police. The police will turn up in minutes and sort it. So they're really getting in my face. I want my coffee. How dare they interrupt my morning coffee? So I just pick my rubbish little Nokia 1100 rubber key phone which i always had that's from day one in thailand brilliant phone picked it up put my thumb on the first button and looked at them and the one of them not the one right in my face the one behind i remember him saying what are you doing and i said police can't be bothered with you and i'm just about it and they suddenly back right off and i haven't pressed the buttons and i'm thinking why have they backed off so quick so okay then they start calming down a little bit and I put my phone back down on the table. They know I meant business, I was just gonna ring the police. No messing around. They calmed down and then I said, right lads, come, you're gonna to talk to me. What happened? I know nothing about you guys apart from seeing you in here last night and it's a posh plane. Uh, I saw you in here last night and you went off with the girls. Why so aggressive? What happened? And they decided I didn't know anything about it, so best to tell me the truth. Of course, I'm like, you can have a beer. And I, ra I went behind the bar, yeah, naughty. Four beers, bin, wrote a quick ticket. I'm gonna charge them for the beers, they're drinking in my bar. Give them a drink, right, what's happening? What happened? These guys were in the penthouse hotel with the four girls. They didn't indicate how long in, I'm guessing an hour or so in, when two other girls turn up at their hotel door. Now, I don't know if the penthouse has got security or what, or how these girls got up to the door, but they were banging on the door of these guys. One of the guys opened the door. Hmm, bad mistake. They should have rung down, security, someone's banging on the door. 
everything solved. No, no, no. One of them opened the door. Apparently the night before, the day before, maybe that same day, these two girls and a couple of the guys had had aerobics, whatever, and the guys had promised these two girls that they were going to come and bar find them that evening, promised them, and built it all up that they wouldn't let them down, made promises to girls. Silly move. Never promise the girls anything, even if you think there's a chance you're going to let them down, don't do it. They promised these two girls they were going to bar find the girls, the doors opened by one of them, the girls have come through the door and um, you can imagine what they're looking at. You know, there's four girls in there, four guys. What's happening? They know. And uh, it happens. Apparently one of the Kerber's friends knew the girls. The four girls got dressed, got up. The two girls, they all quick talking, something said something. And these girls, two girls, have gone ballistic, demanding money off the guys for not going and getting them. Immediately, Kirby and the girls have turned around and started shouting at the guys, right, you've got to pay us now. You, just, you can just imagine it. Six girls, all demanding money. Four guys, drunk, probably by then. It's all kicking off. And the guys haven't turned around and resolved it immediately. The two girls apparently have gone in the bathroom and smashed all the mirrors in the bathroom and the glass, there's a glass shower thing, door, next, they've smashed it. The guys then are realising, oh my god, it's kicking off big time. They start, they pay the four girls some money, but before they've managed to resolve this, the other two are kicking off more, they're into the room and starting to smash stuff. At this point, someone's told security, the noise or whatever, security have come flying upstairs through the door, one security guard apparently, and within 60 seconds, the police have arrived. Oh, oh. The girls, how, I don't know, you tell me, have got out the door, all six girls, and gone, legged it. They've got out, the police are there, but the girls have got out, well that's very... Mm. Well, so here you are, four guys, drunk, northern UK lads, hotel room is smashed glass everywhere and other things smashed, hotel security and police. From what the lads said, they've paid the security, the police, the hotel, whoever, uh, and thinking back, I, I, I seem to remember it was about 20,000 baht, which was a lot of money back then, in sort of 2001, 2002. That would have been about five, 600 pounds. They've paid, agreed, 20 odd thousand baht, but they've been kicked out of the hotel. Suitcases, bags, uh, well, they're down to reception, all the bags and stuff. They've agreed everything, but they're out of that hotel. They've come to my bar with no cases or anything. So they've been hammered for 20 odd thousand baht. And that's why they've turned up at my bar in the morning all angry, because it was from my bar the girls came from. The bar's responsible for it to a certain degree for the girls. Of course, I'm sat there, I still haven't, I'm, I'm halfway through my coffee. You can imagine, I like my tea and coffee, you know? Ah. How dare they bring me a problem at like 10, 11 in the morning. Ugh, pain. So they've told me the story. They're drinking the beers. What can I do? I'm just a bar manager. You, and I've then explained to them the big mistake they've made with those two girls. And that we can't do anything. The girl, our four girls have done what they wanted and they've got out of there probably have guys who haven't paid them enough and I said my four girls are going to be looking for you if you haven't paid them enough and they said they can't remember none of them could remember how much they paid the girls yeah. I want money out of them to pay the girls if they haven't paid them enough so but a lot of hassle so from this 
the guys have drunk the beer, I've said, there's nothing I can do, you're not getting your bar fines back. There's no point in coming back to this bar causing problem with the girls, they'll just ring the police again, and you'll get nabbed again. You've just got to stay away from our girls, stay away from the bar. Sorry lads, you know, you come here, you're going to end up getting in trouble again, can't help you. Pay your bill and go away. <laughs> and luckily, at that point, they paid me their uh, 320 bar, I think it was, for the four drinks. And agreed that they'd made a mistake. They've realised the mistake. They know I'm going to ring the police. They know the girls are going to ring the police. They're psh, tough. Off they go. Later on in the day, Frozen turns up. Uh, the one girl is staying upstairs, has come down, Frozen's asked, and yeah, pretty much the guys had paid the four girls the right money, but they hadn't paid those other two girls. And I just pre-warned all the bar staff, what these guys, if they appear, could have a problem, we'll sort them out with the police. But there we go. If you guys promise girls stuff, these girls will sometimes hold you to it and cause you problems. Now Kirby, uh, this was her, her doing for the bar for us because she, like, yeah, we'll do the foursome, we'll do the roundabout, whatever you want to call it, and the acrobatics. Oh, um, I at, we, at this point I told Kirby no more <laughs> coming into our bar doing deals like this. One-on-ones, no problem, but none of this and bringing hassle to the bar. Apple lost face because of that. Um, Kirby had come into our bar, done this deal, and it had gone wrong. She'd caused Apple to lose face with Frozen and me. But Frozen and me did talk to Apple and say, you know, it's not a problem, but Kirby's gotta be careful. But she did lose face, so that wasn't good. Um, wasn't good at all. So there you go, Kirby, trouble. Oh, more stories about Kirby and Apple to come. I've got a few, so I will be doing those soon. And uh, I won't tell you about some parcels that have come today because I don't know when this video is going. I'm going to drop it up. So <laughs> there we go, Kirby trouble. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something from that, guys. Don't promise girls anything. Please, don't do it. It'll bite you in the ass. <laughs> I'll catch you all soon on the next video. Mm.